Hello all, this is just a short video to walk you through creating a new project in Android Studio. Currently we're looking at the launch page when first opening Android Studio. Notice this is version 4.0.1. Uh, Google comes out with new versions all the time. So um, if you're using our textbook, you'll notice that the versions have come along quite a bit since the release of our textbook. We're eagerly awaiting the next release that has not yet come out from our text. So I'm going to just walk through creating a project. You'll notice a lot of similarities with the textbook and also a few differences. So first of all, over here on the left, if you've created projects in the past, um, they're going to show up in this list. If you ever want to remove them from the, from the list, you can just X out to get them off of that list. But to start a new project, you simply click Start a New Android Studio Project, and it comes to this screen where you select what's called a template. Uh, there's various types of templates. For this class, um, at least starting out, we're going to choose an empty activity. Um, but notice there are various other types of activities that you can, or I'm sorry, project templates that you can choose. So at this point, you would give your application a name. So if I were to do the hello world, um, I could change that name here. The package name, I usually leave that alone. That, that updates dynamically based on the project name that you choose. You do want to pay attention to the save location. I know a lot of times we blow by this um, as programmers, but it's important to note where this is saved so that you can eventually get back to that location. Also, the language um, is very important. There's actually two language selections, Kotlin and Java, for Android development, and we're going to stick with Java. And then the minimum SDK, again, I would leave this selection alone for now. If yours is different than mine, um, that's absolutely fine. Basically, that minimum SDK is indicating to what version backwards uh, my application will be supported. So in other words, this particular app will run on any Android device running Android 4.1 operating system or later. It also gives me an approximation that my app will run on 99.8% of all devices by choosing this minimum SDK. So it's, it's for backwards compatibility, but I would suggest keeping the default and just click finish. So it's important to notice at this point that Android Studio is attempting to create and configure your project and it does take some time. Um, so it's not done and if you're new to Android Studio you might not realize that it is still building, it is still doing some things here. Um, sometimes down in the bottom We'll see updates um, coming through that are basically indicating that things are still changing. Um, up here around the top, you're going to see some tabs. These tabs allow you to toggle between the files in the project. So I'm going to go ahead and click on activity underscore main dot XML and just real quick, we'll talk much more about this. An XML file um, in this context, an activity, is a layout file, meaning that this is where you would specify your graphical user interface components. This is what the user sees and interacts with. MainActivity.java is your Java code that is the back end um, that basically builds the logic that goes along with activity underscore main.xml. Over here on the right, or I'm sorry, on the far left hand side, you can select this project um, tab and it will bring you your menu of all the items in your project. There's actually many more files than just those two. Um, MainActivity.java is located under the Java folder. Activity underscore main is located under res for resources, layout, and then activity underscore main. That's important to know because you know if at any point we would accidentally close one of those tabs, we can get it back easily by coming over here to your project navigation pane and clicking to reopen those files. Depending upon um, which file is opened, 
you will have um, a different view over here on the right. So, for example, if mainactivity.java is opened, what we see is basically a text editor that does show us inline compilation um, feedback. So if we have, you know, a syntax error, it'll show us. It has a very nice editor. Activity underscore main, on the other hand, since it is uh, dealing with the layout, what the user sees, and as you can see, it automatically created a hello world for us here. Um, it, it has a different set of windows. We have a palette over here. A palette is a little window that allows us to choose between various widgets to drag over into our layout screen. So it's a drag and drop interface where we can drag and drop widgets on this uh, layout. Now, notice that there's two different images for the layout. Uh, we can change that. Right now we're seeing a design in the blueprint. The blueprint's there on the right. Just two different ways to see our design. If you want to get uh, maybe let's say that blueprint out of the picture, just look at the design to simplify things. That's under this button here where you can select your design surface. Along the top here, um, this button to the right is your orientation, so you can flip that from portrait to landscape. This uh, button here indicates what device we're previewing our particular layout on in the screen here. This button indicates what build version uh, that we're using for this project. Theme is something we'll talk about a little bit later. And this is our locale, uh, what language we're using for our application. So those are just some of the basics that we'll see a lot more later. Um, this right here is our design surface. We can move items around, and we'll talk much more about that in the future. Over here on the left, you'll see a component tree that allows us to see in a tree layout all the various widgets on our um, design view. So here's my text view. Text view in Android is basically a label. It's something the user sees but cannot edit that says hello world. And I can either select that text view here or I can select it here in my designer window. When I click on it, the attributes window over here on the left or on the right changes. So whichever item is um, selected, the attributes window will reflect the attributes of that item. So those are just some of the basics of um, the um, activity underscore main. Again, we're going to delve into a lot more detail um, regarding this. And there are changes that have happened between various versions of Android Studio. So as we move along, um, although some of those changes are intuitive, I'll try to point them out um, as we go. Um, around the top right hand side, and this is a difference between earlier versions of Android Studio, we are able to see the XML that correlates to activity underscore main. So a moment ago we were looking at a designer, so we were in the design view. But just so you know, when you drag and drop items onto that design uh, layout right here, it actually generates XML, and you can see that XML by clicking on the code. Um, tab up here. So over here on the left, I'm going to go back to our project structure for a moment. Um, res stands for resources, and that's where we found our activity underscore main that was generated. Java um, contains Java code, of course. And manifests, we'll see, um, holds project level settings. So Android manifest.xml. Um, occasionally, we'll have to dig in there and edit some um, some properties that are project at the project level. So right now we've created a new project. Um, everything is ready to go. I haven't actually edited anything, um, but this is a hello world project. If I wanted to change, let's say hello world to hello Android, I could select this particular widget over here on the right in my attributes. I could then edit this to say hello Android. 
and that would change um, the layout as well. So once you're ready to, hey, let's test out this program, let's see what happens. Um, we want to go ahead and run your project. Running, by the way, implicitly builds your project. So if you try to run your project, it will compile your Java code. It will try to build all your resources and connect all libraries. So that process of com compiling, linking, um, the entire process is called building. So if you try to run, it will build your project or make your project. Uh, but just so you know, you can also, if you want to build without running your project, you can just select Build Make Project. If you're interested in building because you want to run your project, you can very simply click the play button here to run your app. Now, the first time you do this, um, it may not immediately run. It may ask you, um, well, what are we running this on? You know, we'll talk a little later about how we can actually run this on your Android device at home. If you have a tablet or phone you'd like to try this out on, this is really actually a, a nice, simple process that you can do. Um, but the other thing that you can do, you're not required to have an Android device, is to run your project on what's called an emulator, which is just a virtual device that's created to emulate a real physical device. So for example, to the left of the run button right now, I have created ahead of time a Nexus 7 um, emulated device. So when I click, uh, kick off this process to run the app, that's what it's going to try to run it on. Now, if this is the first time you're using this and you try to run your app, it will ask you to create a virtual device. And it actually has a pretty straightforward process. It guides you through. Just pick a phone um, is my recommendation. Uh, it doesn't really matter too much at this point what phone you create. I would probably steer clear of creating a really large device like a, a tablet just because it uses more memory. Um, but uh, it largely doesn't matter what device you pick here and then you can click run app. So this does take a little bit of time because behind the scenes it basically loads up a phone with a real working operating system as you've specified when you created the device. Um, sometimes you might encounter a lock screen that you have to unlock depending on what device you chose. But here you can see my Nexus 7 um, running my Hello World. Uh, it actually updated to Hello Android because, <clears throat> excuse me, prior I had run this and it had said Hello World. So uh, that's another important thing to realize. You can keep your emulated device open and then go back and forth and change your project or open another project and work on that one. And every time you hit run, it's going to, you know, if you have that emulated device open, it will update it to the new changes. So that's kind of a nice little time saver. Instead of closing this device here between every change, I wouldn't recommend that. I'd recommend just keep it open. Um, that way you don't have to go through the whole loading process. So that's basically it. This is a Hello World or Hello Android device uh, application. It's running here on a Nexus 7. And uh, we have no compilation errors. That was one other thing I wanted to show you. Down here at the bottom, there are some tabs that are important. Uh, the Build tab will show you if there are any build errors. And I believe that this will automatically display had there been some errors, but we did not have any. Um, and the run tab shows us output uh, from the run, such as if we'd had anything logging. Uh, you can also find errors in here. So we didn't have any, so that was fine. We had a, a successful build, and you can see that the build finished at a given time here.